there's also some changes of customs between songs, not now. Well, I should do one because they say, don't stay too long with the same costumes. All the ladies in the audience and all the gentlemen don't like it. No, 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 stay here. <laughs> This got me out of the army. And I'm still alive. 2008. Yes, baby, yes. <laughs> okay. Life is just a bowl of cherries. So live it and laugh at it all. Keep repeating, it's the very Charming, baby, charming. Oh, I'm charmed. 
You know something, my dear? I know it's not very nice to show off, but it's because I am here with family. I'm so happy to say, since I don't have an MC to mention it, that when I was a teenager in Chicago, I was a teenager once or twice in 1965, somebody was documenting me performing as Judy since I came from Cuba, I was a tiny boy, and I got to see Judy in person, I told her so. And I found out about three months ago that two books came out out of Chicago mentioning my name, and then this gentleman who appeared on the DVD wrote about Finogius and myself, and then another gentleman wrote about my modest Garland tribute in his book in Minnesota. So one thing I'm happy is that I try very hard to give Judy all my love throughout the years, and if I were to pass on tomorrow, at least I left something written in books. Now, this is a, and by the way, I am, so when you write your comment cards, I don't pretend to sound like Judy or to look even like her. So don't say, oh, well, he doesn't sound like Judy, because if I was Judy Garland, I wouldn't be here for free. I'd be working at Palladium in London. Well, I get paid, but I don't work for free, but anyway. Oh, yes, I'm melting. I look like the witch of the West. And I, I go for all right. Maybe I should take a drink here, and I'll forget all my words, and I'll, I'll start over. Oh, yes, okay. Now, I'm supposed to introduce the song called Lorna, that was written for Judy Garland's daughter, Lorna. And when Judy was performing for her CBS series uh, in the 1960s, Maud Lindsay was her conductor, and there was a particular show in which Judy wanted to sing a song for each of her children, Liza. Of course, there's a song called Liza, Liza, skies are gray, but when you smile at me, all the clouds will roll away. And there was a song about her son, Joey Luft, from uh, her husband, Sid Luft, that went like, a, it seems like happiness is just a thing called you. He's got a smile that make the lilacs wanna grow. But there was no song about Lorna, and she was an angry child. And they looked, and they, they found uh, Linda, they found Lola, they found Lorraine, they found Lulu, and they even found Lydia, the tattooed lady, but not Lorna. So Julie had a theme song at the beginning of the show that Mort Lindsay wrote for her. And she said to Mort, if we could get one of the finest lyricists in the country, Johnny Mercer, to write the, the words for, and he, yes, so he did, yes, he did the song, he wrote the lyrics for the song, Lorna, which I'm going to attend to you, for you now. And this is the song, since there's no Lorna here, and you're not a Lorna, I'll pretend I'll find some Lorna here, Betty, you can be my Lorna, and I'll sing to you.
I should have taken some of your drink. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so I can be. Oh, then you write some awful comments and you present to the, the Clark County. Oh, my God. Everybody's so innocent. And then they, they finger point. Oh, my God, what did they say? Oh, did they, the other was drunk on the stage? Oh, no, please, I'm not drunk. I wish I were. Uh, I am trying to go, girl, right? I'm trying. Okay, I'm going. I'm coming. Come, you're going. You're yes, going. I'm coming. I'm going. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And I don't turn your mattress upside down. Please, my red lights are on. Look. Oh, but poor oh, Judy. Yeah. Poor Judy, yeah. she'll, she'll be ashamed that her fans are doing that. Oh, Thank you, sweetie. Thank oh. you. Okay, darling. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Street. 
said, I can always bring my applause from Carnegie Hall. You know what they do on TV now? They put laugh tracks and applause tracks. So maybe we should bring applause and laugh tracks for shows. I don't need it. How oh, sweet of you, darling. Thank you. I don't need it. I'm good. I'll keep going. Okay, I'll keep going. Don't run. Don't worry. Okay. It's so beautiful. Thank you, sweetie. Boy, you can. I want you to bring the time back so I can really look pretty in 1975. But what do you do? You know, in the Bay Area, you have this wonderful fog that pumps your skin. And here it's so dry that people say, oh, it's the desert. Just open the eyes and stick your head in. It's so hot, you get lines like crocodiles. And I don't have the money like some of these rich street uh, entertainers to have collagen shots every two months. That's why they look so pretty. Well. Yeah, yes, no, I don't have any, I wish I had collagen shots. If I had collagen shots, well, I can pull time back. Let's go. No, it's too space. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I hope I can never see some. Unfortunately, this is not the case, but 
I try to tell people every day how much I like them, I love them, because sometimes it's too late. And these are darling flowers. Thank you so much. What? I'm alive? Oh, I hope so. I feel like a robot today. What? I feel like a robot. So just be kind with your comments. I don't think I've forgotten too many lyrics so far, but you never know. That's what's wrong. That's what happens when you do live and a pantomime. I don't have to worry if I pantomime, I, I make a mistake, I just open my mouth, but if I open my mouth, I read the words, I'm shot. Ooh, well, you don't shoot me too much. No, you're, you're very nice. No, 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 no thank you. Okay, sweetie. Okay, I'm going, I'm coming, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, I guess this Here's one of the new ones that Mark Herron wanted Judy to sing at the Palladium in London. And she didn't sing anything new since the end, her AGM days. So it was a big deal in the 60s when she did this song. Thank <laughs> you. 
spotlight and great talent like Judy Singh. Now they, everybody comes out with, with people in the background going, oh, look, 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 singing, and all these lights. Well, if you got all this camouflage behind you, I mean, that's easy, but we have to come out alone into a hard stage. That's performer. Uh, thank you, darling. Well, I made it to 2008. I started in 1965 in Chicago. Well, it's a long time. It seems like yesterday. Most of the people I know are dead. And now because, and I, and you allow, no, I know a lot of straight people. No, it's not like what you think about. Just a, I was a, a kid, about 18, and the people were like 50 and 60 years old. So by the time I grew up and got bigger and older, they all were going. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to be alone. I am, I am alone. You're not alone. No? Been there. Thank you. Well, anyway, why I'm kind of hard. I like to dedicate, really, this show to all you wonderful, lovely people that came to see me, and of course to Miss Garland and three darling friends of mine who have gone beyond now. They left us. Charles Blair from England, Billy Tweedy from Ireland, and Sonny Gallagher from Pennsylvania, and they were connected with the Judy Garland fan club, and uh, also they were my friends, and they encouraged me to go on no matter what. So to them, I'm dedicating the show, and I can just see Judy, her sense of humor, saying, Desi, Lucy, come down here. Look at David, the Cuban boy, doing my, my show with an accent. And Desi would say, oh, what's wrong with the Cuban accent? 
¿Qué pasa, yo, tú, yo, ¿Qué pasa, Lucy? ¿Qué pasa, Judy? ¿Qué bueno el acento cubano? She said, and, and, and of course, Lucy says, yes, but I was the MGM star, Lucy. Yes, but I was with a Cuban accent, the one who made the show. I love Lucy the way it was. Oh, oh stop bickering. You both were wonderful. And it's true, I do, the Cuban accent never went away. I became a, I became a citizen, and it didn't go away. So I had to go through it, you know. So, yes, I'm going. Anyway, I have to tell you some anecdotes. Again, Judy was the best storyteller in the world, so I had to slow down because Cubans talk very fast. So I'm going to talk very slowly, like an old recording. This was a story that Judy told in the 1960s. She was in Paris visiting some friends of hers by the name of Janet Espanier and her husband. And at the party was Janet Espanier, Judy, her uh, new beau husband to be, Mark Heron, and Noel Coward. When all of a sudden, comes sing Marlena, Marlena Dietrich, and she says, darling, God. Yes. Oh, Marlene is back there. Oh, oh my God. God, what happened to you, Marlene? <laughs> what happened to your gun and your wig? Oh. Well, anyway, so she came with a huge, huge record, bigger than a 12 inch, and she said, would anybody would like to hear my record? And Judy said, sure, we'd like to hear your, your record. We're going to tell her, no, we don't want to hear your record. And Marlene was just through doing a tour of different provinces in Germany. So Marlene, they didn't have CDs then. This was before you were born. They had records made of vinyl. She put this record on, and it was just applause. Not one note of music. She didn't sing, there was no orchestra, just applause. And the applause would vary. And she would say, that's Frankfurt. That's Berlin. I don't do German accents. But then Noel Cower whispering to Judy Sear, I hope there isn't another side. <laughs> and there was! And there was. Yes. And there was. Another story that somebody... Yeah, well, anyway. Two people are quiet. Let the poor girl work. It's so hard. Okay. Make this, make this louder, darling, so I won't lose my voice. Make this louder. A friend of mine sent to me through the internet uh, an anecdote, and she said, you better learn it quickly. I said, I should read it. After all, ladies Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, they went on tour in the seas and they read some of their famous passages from their plays. She said, no, no, memorize it. So I, I hope I don't screw the lines, but she, this was in the, uh, in the 1930s when Judy did The Wizard of Us, while the munchkins, while the boys, said to her, of course, this is a, a PG audience, Judy, when you get bigger, I would like to make love to you. And Judy, a veteran, show business veteran, looked at him and said, if you do and I catch you. <laughs> <laughs> and there he is, the munchkin, he grew up. Oh, yes. Well, and then another story was that Judy was doing a, a, a premiere for Babes in Arms, and she wanted very badly to have a dress by Adrian, who was the famous, he was the in guy for MGM, a designer. And Mr. Mayer said, oh, no, 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 Judy, you don't want one of Adrian, you know, gowns, you know, you're not the type, you're too young. So Hedda Hopper, the famous columnist, a step in and said, Mr. Mayor, she's not too young to make for your company thousands of dollars per month. So Judy got the dress, thanks to Hedda. <laughs> and anyway, this is another, Mar another Marlena story. Mar Judy went to see Marlena perform in London, and she says, you know, before she goes down, it takes hours for the seamstress to put Marlena 
together, you know, in a beautiful costume, you know, and the hair and so on. And then when she comes out, before she comes out, there's a huge overture that play. I can't help it. This huge overture. And all of a sudden, comes in Marlena, and people say, oh, isn't she beautiful? And she always does. She always looks beautiful. But then she stands in front of the mic, and she sings a sad song. And she goes into a sadder song and talks about all the songs she did while the war was going on. I, she, I think she got a few of mine there from MGM. Like Judy says, I, Marlena brings her age down and I try to pretend mine. Well, so that's the end of that. Marlena did two stories. And uh, now I guess I have to, do, like they used to say at MGM, don't let her talk, just let her sing. Well, but then when she got on Jack Barr's show, on Johnny Carson's show, she made it up because she got to talk then. Okay, maestro, let's go to the other side. Every day, just go along the till sundown. Here's the rundown. Every day that comes, comes once in a lifetime. Take each day.
to be a lady and jump on the stage. So, I'll do it very ladylike. It's a very high class direction. Oh yes dear, if you want to do something well, do it. And I put the ladies up in a pedestal, so I do them properly. So they say, female impersonator, I don't do females, I do ladies. Will you darling hold this mic for me? Major good, but to put some lights here <laughs> so that people over 40 can have softer. I wonder how long somebody said to me before, David, don't you dare get so close to the people? A very nice gentleman, because you break the illusion, they see you so close, the illusion looks prettier when you stay behind. I said, well, my act was always built on the warm and charming personality. So if I can show a wrinkle or a line and get closer, I'd rather do that than be very Marlena Dietrich and be in the back sitting all the like this. You know. So be kind with your comments so they can ask me back next year. I got something else for you. My phenomenal wise. A beautiful show in which I will sing all the songs that I, I made known as Pinocchio and talk about all the wonderful entertainers that play at the club. Now we're going to do a song that belongs to Dorothy Gale of Kansas. And this is for you, my dear Judy. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
is we are able, thanks to you and your love, we can all make it, you know, just dream and you'll be there. If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why oh boy, City, a great producer, Carlos Candiani, he came with his friend, and Marie and her daughter, one well, of my neighbors, I'm sure I miss somebody, and they say, oh, they, we came to see me, the image, oh, yes, Cindy Carlson from the shelter, Think, go to the shelter and get some lovely dogs from her, she wears her fanny off, she's a lovely lady, and I'm sure there's other people who said, he didn't mention me, but I can't see, what do you expect me, after 40, I can't see, I see a lot of blood, he done is here, Oh, Donna, she came, my friend. So, I, so there's two or three. And the rest of you, I don't have the pleasure of knowing. I thank you for coming. God bless you. And when you talk about me, and I know you will, please be kind. <laughs> Get up to cast it on. We yeah, can't right. Get up. We can't get up. Yeah. Um, uh, after you.